Good morning, everybody. This is Chuck Bartok speaking to you from the banks of the Sacramento River here in gorgeous Northern California. We're a bit cloudy, uh, supposed to actually warm up this weekend. And unfortunately, the mosquitoes will be picking us up and carrying us off all by themselves. <laughs> to the right of me, well, maybe to the left of you, uh, is a wonderful gentleman in that gorgeous red Tam O'Shanter, Hugh Little, Red Cap Sales Coaching, and otherwise known as the Sales Whiz. Uh, just a brief history, I was privileged to meet Hugh, I believe close to 12 years ago. We both had business card sites online, which was a big deal then. And uh, I saw his, he lived in Sacramento, and just something about the way he wrote about himself intrigued me and I felt we had a common bond. And that common bond was a business and sales mindset. What do you do in those days? Uh, you get on the phone and call the person. And uh, uh, from that first conversation on, we've gone through uh, uh, over a lot of bridges. Uh, Hugh has moved a bit. I'm still here. <laughs> And uh, Hugh, why don't you jump right in and tell us about yourself and how you got to be where you are today from all that wandering around? Well, first of all, you and I have been both been selling since before there was dirt. Yeah, and <laughs> that's for sure. Even before there were answering machines. And so you right. had to call somebody until they picked the phone up. Right. And both of us, I think, have gotten pretty good, though, at the new technology. We both uh, use social media and the Internet and websites and all of that kind of thing. So you can teach some old dogs new tricks. Absolutely. It's it's possible. So, yeah, we lived in California when I met you. And in 2006, my mom uh, got ill and had to go into an assisted living place. And we moved back to Longmont, Colorado and to take care of her. And we lived there for five years. And when mom passed away, my wife, uh, Priscilla, uh, has always wanted to live someplace where it was tropical. And she said, she's a pretty good salesperson. She doesn't think she's a salesperson, but she is. Women are and the best, Hugh. They are. That. And her ask, for the, her ask for the sale was, I'm moving to Florida. Do you want to go or not? Yeah. <laughs> That's a direct close. We call that a direct close. <laughs> That's right. So I, I think I will. That'd be a good idea. And uh, so we moved to Sebring, Florida. We've been here now four and a half years, and there are a lot of things that I miss about Colorado. Uh, I love the mountains. I've got good friends there. I was in a country rock band up there that I really enjoyed. But uh, there are two things about Colorado that I don't miss. Shoveling snow and driving in it are the two things that I don't really miss about Colorado. And the, the weather down here it's been in the 80s the last couple of days, and my wife is just terribly happy about that. I said, wait a minute, it's February. It's supposed to be a little bit cool. And she said, no, 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 you're in Florida now. So um, uh, we moved down here and, and have just really enjoyed it. And thanks to technology, and uh, you, you know, we were talking about back in the old days when all you could do was call on the telephone. When I was in Colorado, my coaching practice was mainly person to person, in person. So I would go to a person's place of business or to their home and sit down with them and work with them. And thanks to technology and thanks to a great platform called Zoom that I use, yes. I now work with people in the United Kingdom and Australia and New Zealand and uh, Dubai and uh, eight or nine states. So. I was able to make the move to Florida without it affecting my business in a, a, a negative way. Right. So you know, it, 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 there's it, something about you and I, as you mentioned, we've been selling since we were, well, I started about age nine, actually making a reasonable amount of money. By 13, I'd surpassed my father's income and he was a electrician. So, you know, and a darn good one too. It wasn't that I was uh, 
any spectacular person. I just sold well. Uh, y you became a sales trainer. I know we use the word coach uh, because you wanted to share things that you've been using effectively that you saw rife in the sales world. Can you kind of focus on that evolvement? I remember the day with the dairy. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's, you know, sales has changed so much since, since we first started. And I actually didn't start until the early seventies. And I can remember going to a, a, a seminar. It was one of the big things that they have on an arena and they invited all of these speakers in. And one of the speakers who was very, very famous during that time came out on the stage. I'll never forget this. He walked up to the front of the stage, looked out at the five or 6,000 people that were out there in the arena, put his hand in his pocket. And he said, your prospects have your money in their pockets and it's your job to do everything short of going to jail to get the money out of their pockets and into <laughs> yours. And that's kind of how sales was taught and it's how it was done for many, many years. You say anything, you do anything, you argue, you cajole, you uh, shame, you just do anything you can to get people to do what you want them to do. And that's, that's how it was done. And unfortunately, that's still how it's done sometimes to today. What I learned over the course of 45 years of being out in the field selling, and uh, by the way, uh, my nickname is the sales wizard, and I'll tell you why I'm the sales wizard. I'm the sales wizard because during that 45 years, I made every single mistake in the book. And there were times when I just wanted to quit because things were going so badly and I was having such a hard time. And instead of quitting, I learned from what I did wrong and I made changes and I'm still making changes and I'm still learning and I'm still growing. Um, you know, sometimes people say, oh, I don't think I need a coach. I'm already pretty good at what I do. Let me tell you something. I've been selling for 45 years. I teach other people how to sell, and I have a sales coach. Right now, it's uh, Eric Lawholm, and yeah. I'm involved oh, in Eric this. Eric is program. phenomenal. Eric is phenomenal. He, yeah, he is, great. and I've worked with other sales coaches, and I intend to work with sales coaches for the rest of my life and continue to learn and grow because I've got to do that to stay on the cutting edge of what I do. And so my goal in, in teaching other people to sell, and I was already working at a, a local dairy up in Colorado as a sales manager, and I wrote their sales, ma their sales manual, and I taught people to go out and sell. I went on ride-alongs with them and, and critiqued what they were doing. And so it really wasn't a big leap from that to starting my own business and teaching people from all kinds of different companies uh, how to sell and, you know, and what you, to can I Can I interrupt that just for a second? Sure. You said that so easily about the dairy. And the thing that fascinated me about that when we were talking about it when you were involved is that you actually showed the dairy how day, uh, excuse me, door-to-door -door milk delivery could be reintroduced and become extremely successful in these days of that not being here anymore. And so they you had a, you knew that. Yeah, they actually already were doing that and had done it for quite a number of years. What we did was refine the script, taught them to sell in a new different way. And the result of that was that my sales crew outsold every sales crew that they had ever had in the history of the entire company. And that was simply because we scripted what we were doing. Uh, we didn't try to twist anybody's arm. We just explained to them what was in it for them and how neat it was, gave them some free samples and um, did a start card and started the subscription for them. So. The things that I learned through that process and really through the whole process of, of selling and the way that selling has changed now, there are just a number of things that I do differently and that I encourage my uh, clients to do differently than it was done in the old days. 
And the first thing is, Chuck, I truly believe, and, and this has to do with mindset, and this lab really is about a, a mindset to enable us to be really successful at selling. And the first thing is that I don't believe that it's a salesperson's job to convince the prospect to do what the salesperson wants them to do. And that's, that's what so many people think that a salesperson's job is that. And that's why they stick their nose up and say, Ooh, I would never want to be a salesperson because, you know, you have to go out and you have to, you know, be icky and scary in order to do it. And I don't believe that that's the case. I think that our job as salespeople is just to help people do what they want to do and what they need to do. And sometimes there are people that we run into out there who don't believe that, that what we have available, that our product or service really is valuable. Oh, you know, that, that coaching stuff, that's just a scam. Or, oh, you know, the alternative medicine. You know, I don't believe in that. You know, I just go to a regular doctor. I don't, you know, I think chiropractors are a bunch of frauds. And I work with a lot of chiropractors. So that's one of the reasons I use that as an example. Right. It's also not a salesperson's job to be the jackass whisperer. You don't have to convince anybody that your product or service has value. Go out and look for and find the people who are looking for you. The people who want the result that your product or your service can bring to them. You see, our prospects out there just have one thing on their minds. There's one question in their minds when they sit down to talk with us. And that question is, what's in it for me? What's it going to do for me? How it's gonna, how's it going to make my life better, more productive, more profitable, easier, more peaceful? How am I going to be happier as a result of doing this? And you know what we do sometimes as, as salespeople or, or the old way of selling, uh, what that looked like was getting together with people and doing what, what I call um, show up and throw up. And it, it looked something like this. Well, we've been in business for 35 years and we have the best products and services on the market today and we're so much better than our competitors and we have great customer service and boy, do we have a deal for, for you. And it's, I also call it the we, we syndrome because it's all about we and I and us and our instead of about you and your. So what I teach my clients to do in the process of value statements is to use you statements. You can have, you can be, you can do, you can enjoy, you can take advantage of. Because that answers the question, what's in it for me? Well, you right. can do this, you can have this, you can enjoy this. That's the answer to it. Um, the, the, other, the other thing where mindset is concerned, and then I'll shut up and let you get a word That's in okay. edgewise. Right. Uh, the other thing about mindset is, is the, the the thing about focus, and I think this is so important. Whenever we're sitting in front of a, a prospect, whether it's uh, in person, whether it's virtually, whether it's on the telephone, when we're talking with a prospect, our focus has to be 100% on that prospect and what their needs are, and we're asking questions and we're trying to figure out what it is that they really need that our product or service might be able to provide for them, either the solution to a problem or the way to get something that they really want and that they really need. And so if we're thinking about the stack of bills that's on the desk and boy, we really need to make a sale and we need to get some money in the bank so that we can take care of that stack of bills, or if I'm focused on the, the disagreement that I had with my significant other before we walked out and before I walked out the door to go talk to somebody about sales, or if I'm thinking about the sales manager just talked to me this morning and told me that I'm going to be out of a job if I don't sell something this week, or I'm thinking about the party or the get together that I'm going to go to after work today. If my focus is on anything other than that prospect and how I can help them, my focus is in the wrong place. Right, right. And so I have to bring that focus back to how can I help? How can I serve? What can I do for this person that's going to make their life better? How can my product or service really help them? And if my focus is there, they're going to feel that and they're going to want to do business with me because they know that I'm really 
motivated and dedicated to helping them. If my focus is any place else, they're gonna they're they're gonna feel that too. And have you ever, Chuck, have you ever had the experience of having somebody sit down and talk with you about their product or their service? And maybe they did a pretty good job of explaining what it was about. And it was even something that you were kind of looking for and kind of wanted. And it got to the point where they asked you to do business with them and you just get this feeling in your gut. I don't know what it is. There's just something wrong here. I don't, I don't think I want to do this. And so you say, you know, let me think about that for a little while and I'll call you if I decide to do it or I need to talk to somebody or I'm going to get some other bids and if you're the winner, I'll call you back. And then you never call that person back because in your gut, you just feel like there's something wrong and you don't know what it is. There's just something wrong. I'm not going to do this. And I really believe that when that happens, what's really going on is that that salesperson had their focus someplace else. Absolutely. It was on closing the sale and getting money for themselves or it was on something besides, I really want to help and here's what you can have if you work with me. <clears throat> Hugh, that, that, uh, what, what you just described, and I've got a couple of stories to back that up, but one of the things about Blab <clears throat> is our audience. We are going to open the seats later. But Franklin, Franklin Acosta, asked, what advice can you offer those who are selling a product or service when they're just starting out? I, of course, would have a question immediately, meaning you have zero customers and zero reputation. Okay. I, I'd like to start this, and then you pick it up, Hugh. Uh, Franklin, every one of us uh, started out with no customers and no reputation. <laughs> and it, this might sound very simplistic, but how you start out is you do it. Every time you present your script, and I'm going to emphasize that, your story, and share your value, every time you do it, you get better. Now, if you constantly hit a brick wall, that's the time you want to ask a peer, get on something like Blab, and give a specific example. There's a young lady here on Blab, Melanie, who just grills the heck out of people and really allows you to express your hesitation, and she offers advice on how to clear it, as does Hugh Little on his one-on-one -on -one present uh, sessions. But the, the thing about zero reputation is if you don't believe in that which you're talking about, you will never have a reputation. And I had a person on the telephone the other day make a comment to me that I considered a huge compliment. And guess what? It ended up they wouldn't be a prospect. But here's what they said. I have never listened to or spoken with a sales representative who had more passion for what they do and trying to solve my problem. Okay, now they, they are not going to buy from me because I can't offer a solution to their problem. But it was still worth my time and energy to tell the story because that's what do we do. And Hugh said something. Most of these presentations are my asking questions and listening effectively and then offering a simplistic solution. Now, Hugh, you have more experience in working with people one-on-one -on -one than I do, although all of my sales personnel have done very well over the years. Uh, what advice can you give, Franklin, uh, on starting out? I think the first thing would be if, if you can find a way to possibly afford it, find a sales coach, whether it's me or whether it's somebody else, find somebody that 
uh, has been doing this for a long time, who uh, can help you and guide you through the process of becoming really good at selling. Because selling is, success at selling is simply developing a set of attitudes and a set of skills. Anybody can do it if they're willing to apply themselves to it. And so you're probably going to need some help writing a good script that, that really converts. You're probably going to need some help just building your confidence level and knowing that you can go out and talk with anybody and be really successful at having a conversation with them. And so that, that would be my first suggestion. The second thing is if you're not able to afford uh, a coach, there are some really good online programs that are uh, lower priced that you can take advantage of and that you can learn from. If you're in a financial situation where you're not even able to do that, there is so much incredibly great free stuff out there. If you, if you just uh, go to sales coaches or sales trainers and Google them and go to their websites, you'll almost always find blogs. Some of the blogs are video blogs, some of them are written blogs, and they'll give you all kinds of tremendous advice. If you go to my uh, website at redcapsalescoaching.com, you'll find a, a blog tab and you can go there and there are hundreds of blogs in there about all kinds of different things that have to do with sales and success and business and marketing and all kinds of stuff. I host a radio program every week, uh, really a podcast. And if you go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash S-C-T dash show, you'll find all kinds of audios and um, I interview people like Chuck Bartok and like Tom Hopkins and Eric Lofholm and Don Hudson and Jim Cathcart and bunches and bunches of other people. That's absolutely free. All you have to do is go to that website and start watching videos and you'll get so much really good information that will really help you in your, in your sales. You can get information that will help you write your own script. Um, it's much better and much quicker if you have somebody help you do that. But you can actually go on some of these sites and you can find information that will tell you just exactly how to do that. And so, uh, Franklin, become a student and be a student for the rest of your life. Uh, one <laughs> of the things Tom Hopkins always talks about is that if you – if you read for an hour every day, five days a week, in your particular chosen field, within five years, you'll be a world-class expert in that field. And so do that. Take the time to do that. And the better you get at it, the more you learn, the more you stay on the cutting edge of what's going on, the better you're going to be at selling. And so I, I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, go ahead and ask another one. Ask a follow-up. Frank Franklin did. And by the way, uh, he did you say Bitly S C T? Yes. Dash talk talk. S C T dash show. Okay, I put it up correctly. Franklin asked another question in the side box, which is asked all the time. How do you find them? I'd like to again start off with some experience of my own. <clears throat> before we had opt-in email lists, <clears throat> before we had computers, fax machines, and so on, one thing I learned early on was a system called, I call, personal observation. If I'm mowing lawns for a living, I took time to drive not drive, rode my bicycle through neighborhoods and looked for people whose lawns were unkempt. And I walked up and said, I noticed your lawn needs attention. Is there any way I can help you to alleviate that problem? Obviously, I didn't say those words. And somebody would slam the door in my face Somebody would say, yes, I, my lawnmower is broken. Uh, reasons why. Actually, 
I learned that if they had a problem, uh, maybe short on cash, maybe broken equipment, I found it to my advantage to mow their lawn as a token of a breach or a, a token of friendship. It got to the point that at age 13, I had three carts built, three edgers, three lawnmowers. I had more that I could do, so my friends did the work. I did the selling and collecting the money, which was kind of fun. <laughs> it's a good part of it, you know. <laughs> but but the, the thing was, I looked for people that needed my services. Now, let's, let's go forward many years. You know that for the last 25 years, I've been in the horse barn business uh, on and off. The, there was a time when I got started as I drove around the neighborhood, and we're talking 100-mile territory. That's diameter. And I saw somebody out in front with, with their horses. I drove down the driveway. And I said, hi, a good looking paint horse, good looking quarter horse, whatever it might be, because obviously I knew horses because that was our business also. And I said, I'm just in the neighborhood, wanted to introduce myself. And if you would ever like to take the time to discuss chew proof, fire resistant, easily maintained horse barns, give me a call. Thanks a lot turn around and walk away. Obviously, if I drove by a place that had a brand new gorgeous barn, I'm not going to drive down the driveway. <laughs> because it was pretty obvious to personal observation that they probably didn't need my services. Now, so go ahead on uh, finding the prospects you my suggestion would be because so many people including business owners are communicating with each other on social media uh, that you look into where it is that your prospective clients or customers are most likely to interact and that could be facebook it could be twitter it could be linkedin and that you start connecting with people there and if somebody connects with you on say as an example on LinkedIn, I, which is the one that I use most, if they connect with you on LinkedIn, you have their telephone number, you have their email address, you have instant message, and, and you also have their permission to contact them. That's why they connected with you, so that you can communicate with each other. And it's a, a great way to find and uh, connect with people who are your prospects. Now, there's a whole system and we don't have time to go into all of it maybe we'll do another labs at some point about uh, how to use social media but franklin or any of the others of you who are are on the call today or listening to, to the recording of the call if you will email me at hugh at redcapsalescoaching.com that's redcap redcap red hugh at redcapsalescoaching.com and just let me know that you'd like to have a conversation. Uh, we can sit and talk for 45 minutes or an hour about your business and about your sales and about social media. And I can give you some ideas and strategies that'll get you started. And we'll talk a little bit about whether my coaching services would be a good fit for you or whether they wouldn't. And listen, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking now, he was a sales guy. And so if I agree to talk to him, you know, he's going to try to get me to do things I don't want him to do, and he's going to um, twist my arm, and he's going to argue with me, and I'm going to be obligated to spend my money with him. Listen, you're only right about one thing. I'm a really good sales guy, and that's why I'm not going to do any of those things if we have a conversation. There's not any charge for that initial conversation. There's not any obligation, and there's absolutely no pressure ever. So... Uh, I would just encourage you if you want to find out more specifics about selling and especially using social media, uh, email me and let me know, and I'd be more than happy to take some time and sit down and talk with you about that. And, and I'm going to offer another suggestion. 
because you and I have both have the same offer. <laughs> and, you know, I, I have people calling me daily on my 30, 40 minute free call or whatever. And it's interesting over the years, a select group of those people have been part of my life team. Uh, I'm members of their organization. Uh, I've trained their sick, but it all started out by that initial conversation, that initial phone call. And I think both you and I have the principle of life that if we can help somebody succeed, we don't have to worry about our income. It just kind of chases us all over the place. Uh, I That's been evidenced so many times in my life. The more you give, absolutely, the more you receive. And you have to give for the reason of giving, not for the result coming back to you. And uh, a, a new salesman, Frank, if you are selling, a product, direct marketed product. Uh, when I moved off my farm in Coachella Valley and moved to San Clemente, I spent a year fishing and then decided to go back to work, I became an insurance salesman and nobody knew me. Uh, that was one of your questions. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I got involved in the community, raised my hand, to volunteer for about just every ugly job that communities need to be done. Uh, we're talking boys club, the junior chamber of commerce, things like that. Now just joining them doesn't matter. I raised my head and said, I'll do that. And I did a good job. My phone in the office rang without my soliciting business. Because here's the deal, they knew I was in the insurance business. The logical conclusion was if he could do a good job putting on the circus, there's a good chance he's gonna do a good job putting on my insurance program. So these are just some ideas. If you're local, if you're global like Hugh mentioned, offer whatever, everybody has a talent. Every single person, there's something that they do well. It's inherent in human people and just human beings, human people. I, uh, so I really encourage volunteerism. Hugh, your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, an, another really great place to meet people and interact with people is uh, almost every town in America has a chamber of commerce. And you can be involved in that chamber of commerce. You can go to their mixers to their educational programs. You can meet other business people who are in business in your local area and, uh, and, and talk with them. One of my biggest clients right now is an insurance company and I met them through the local chamber of commerce here in Sebring. So uh, that, that's another great place. You also may find networking groups uh, out there. And you know, trying to figure out where your ideal client hangs out and then hanging out there is is really the key and i'll tell you two quick stories about that years ago when i was selling insurance chuck down in the imperial valley in far southern california about well, 10 miles right below the coachella valley yeah i had um, a buddy down there who sold insurance as well and and we sold for cal farm insurance and we were given an area where we took care of the farmers in that particular area. Well, in Jim's area, and by the way, Jim was one of the top salespeople in, in his company. In his area, there was a crossroads about five or six miles out in the country, and there was a little cafe out there. And every morning between five o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock in the morning, almost every farmer who lived out in that area went in there and had a cup of coffee or breakfast. Guess where Jim was from five to 10 in the morning? Right. Sitting in that cafe, talking to farmers, drinking coffee. Was that and, the Asia Cafe in Nyland or the Cat and Fiddle in Blythe? I mean, not Blythe, <laughs> Brawley. 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 No, it wasn't either one of the, those. This one was out in the uh, sort of the southeast, almost out in the desert. Okay. And, uh, okay. and so it's, uh, it, it was a long way out there, but uh, uh, he was always out there. Yeah. And... Yeah. 
there was another friend of mine, and this was even earlier on when I first started in the insurance business in the 70s. And uh, one of the guys who, again, was one of the top producers, absolutely loved to play golf. And so what he did was he called the CEOs of different companies around town and invited them to go out and play 18 with him. Right. And so they'd spend the, the time in between shots during their golf game, getting acquainted and building rapport and kind of shooting the breeze. And they'd sit down in the clubhouse afterwards and have a couple of drinks and uh, talk a little bit about business and about insurance. And he wrote more insurance than you can shake a stick at and did what he loved at the same time. So right. if you love golf, if you love bowling, if you love to go out hiking in the mountains, if you know whatever it is that you like to do, find some other people who like to do that and go and do that with them and build rapport and have conversations with them. And so those are just some, some different ideas about ways that you can find people and connect with them, build rapport, and then eventually have sales conversations with them. That's uh, It still works today. It works on the internet and it works face to face. When I moved to Northern California, kept my insurance business, finally gave it to my agents. I got involved in the barn business. Again, I didn't know a lot of people, but I started volunteering to announce horse shows. And that got to the point of 30 shows a year. I never had to solicit the sale of a barn <laughs> because I was synonymous with the horse world and became known as the barn guy who's dumb enough to announce for free. Although that evolved into a cash paying proposition also. And uh, so again, these are examples for the audience. Uh, Hugh and I have been around more than a day. These are real experiences and they worked. And most of the time they're, they're very cost effective. Announcing a horse show for free is just a matter of my investing four or five hours of my time. But the amount of exposure positive is, has, is priceless. And like your friend at the Asia Cafe, which it wasn't, and your friend out on the golf course, this works for fly fishing. As you said, hiking. Uh, especially if your business is involved in products that enhance that uh, hobby or sport. Yeah, Let's really open up the chair to see if anybody wants to come in, Hugh. Uh, Franklin, do you want to come in and, and introduce yourself and and uh, maybe ask vocally? That's a great way to start a sales career. <laughs> We're not going to chew you up or, you know, eat, eat, uh, how is it they weren't standoff because they didn't know him. To, to who was that referred, uh, Durham Skyrider? Come on in. Come on in and join us. We got an open seat here. I don't know who you were addressing, Hugh or myself. Don't be afraid to come in. This is, um, you know, kind of a fun time in life. Expression is, is the key. Well, Durham Skyrider. Okay, give me a minute to move my laptop. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Hugh, uh, you also have something called the Elite Academy. I put a link down below about the Elite Academy. Uh, that is kind of a complete package, isn't it? You want to address it while Durham's coming in? Sure. Elite Sales Academy is um, uh, a series of 24 video modules, and it, it takes care of everything from where you go and find prospects, having a sales conversation, some stuff about time task management, and there's even some stuff about personality styles and how you can change your sales conversation to meet the needs of people who are different styles than you. With each one of those modules, there's not only the video, and by the way, the videos are whiteboard videos. Uh, I do just a little cameo at the very beginning of them, and then the rest of the video is whiteboard video. They are fun. They'll make it easy for you to learn. Uh, you'll laugh. You'll have a good time. You'll look forward to doing them. There are also transcripts for those of you who would prefer to read or to read along with uh, the 
the video as it's uh, as it's going. And there's also a quiz at the end of each one of the modules, so you can make sure that you're taking the most important things out of the uh, the, the instruction. And uh, as Chuck said, he's already put uh, a link down there that you can no, go that, to. That link's, that link's bad. <laughs> I'm going to have to hold on, guys. I'm going to get the right link up there. Okay. You know, not being a computer expert. Hold on just a minute. Well, when you go to that link, you can watch the first module absolutely free. There's a video that pops right up there and starts, and you can watch that and kind of get an idea of what the, the modules are like. And if you think they're really cool, then it's just a couple of clicks, and you can go ahead and take advantage of those. Uh, there is also a 30-day um, money-back guarantee. If you check the program out and you decide that it's just not for, for you and you're not going to get any value from it, uh, we certainly don't want you to be out money for something that's not valuable. And so uh, it's a no questions asked. You can get your money back if you don't find value in it. Chuck, well, how are you coming? This works. You know what? Uh, for, for, forget my link, guys. <laughs> okay. it, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, go to, uh, uh, all you have to do is go to EliteSalesAcademy.com. And uh, go ahead and watch the video, and you can go ahead and enroll, and just um, uh, shoot me a message and let me know that you uh, that you heard about that on the blog. There we, go. there we go. Okay, are you coming in? There we go. Here's Durham Skywalker. Hey, Durham. Uh oh, no sound. We uh, we're missing the sound, Durham. There we go. We had that problem with you also. We did. Sometimes those mics give us trouble. Oh, Durham's in the newspaper business. Actually, I've got to get off of here to finish. Our newspaper's already on the street today. It's published every Wednesday in, in Wisconsin and distributed by 9 a.m., but I've got to finish the digital version. So maybe, Durham, what happened to your sound? Not a... Hmm. Well, they'll be here, and she'll be here in just a minute. He'll, he'll be here. Hold on. She'll be here. Durham's online community paper, also TV Skywriter, on the Patricia A. Murray. I'll bet you Durham's real name is Patricia. That helps. <laughs> okay. Well, we can't get your sound up. Did you go up to the little green lock and make sure that the correct microphone is set up? Are you on Chrome? Okay, she's working on it. Okay, she'll be back, she says. We had that problem, too, this morning, didn't we, Hugh? We did. So, anyway, we had uh, Franklin's also. Here she comes. Here we go. Let's see. Another journalist. Okay, let's try again. Can you hear me? There you are. There you are. Fantastic. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Or good afternoon for me. It's 12. Well, it is here. It's right. Patricia, you, you asked the question, how is it they weren't standoffish because they didn't know him? Was that relate, uh, directed to you or myself? Yeah, to, to the, the golf story, because here in, in um, I, I'm not a native of North Carolina, but I've noticed that my town, um, people are extremely cliquish, and they also don't respond to mass media type um approaches everything has to be done face to face and if absolutely you uh, and it's really difficult for me because i i'm not in the in crowd so to speak very difficult uh you could know, i ask a couple of personal questions about that what what kind of describe this describe the crowd that you want to penetrate actually um because i have a community newspaper naturally yes. Uh, I'm, I'm not interested in chains. I, I mean, I, I would not turn down Lowe's or Home Depot, but okay. but I really want to concentrate on local businesses. 
Right. And of course, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I don't do too badly when I find the time to to do the selling. Uh, my problem is finding the time and, and also um, getting to these people. It's, it's very difficult. Durham is not the smallest town in the world. Right. But I don't think I can survive if I have to rely on face to face. OK, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share. This is a strange, probably a very strange uh, uh, thought, but it, it worked very successfully for me. I used to live in San Clemente and I had an office in Fashion Plaza, Newport Beach. Mm -hmm. and that was about an 18 mile drive up the coast highway. Okay. That was the day when you could do it. OK. And again, I was new to town, right? I mentioned I volunteered, mm -hmm. but I wanted to meet businesses in that corridor from Newport Beach to uh, San Clemente. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like businesses and I, my clients were business people. And uh, let's talk about in those days, liquor stores, because they didn't have convenience stores. I pull into a liquor store to buy a pack of gum. Mm -hmm. I bought a lot of gum, Durham. I, 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 Pat, Patricia, I'm sorry. I bought a lot of gum. And here's what I do. I buy a pack of gum, put a quarter on the counter, and I said, boy, this is a nice place. Are you the owner? No, I'm the manager. What time does the owner usually show up? I just, I'd like to meet him, and this is really a dynamite store. So I get that information. If it was the owner, mm -hmm. I say, hey, I really appreciate the, the opportunity of stopping by, buying a pack of gum. Here's my card. If you ever have any questions on effective insurance management, give me a call. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I drove past that store again, I might go in and buy another pack of gum. And like I said, I didn't really chew a lot of gum, mm -hmm. but I bought a lot of gum. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, you know, that's kind of one segment of business. Uh, tire business is the same thing. Okay. Uh, I know this is slow and ponderous, but if you Here's a theory. I don't know if you subscribe. If I pay you money for your service or product, I've pretty much bought a minute of your time. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I mean, now, can you afford to go buy a set of tires every day? No. <laughs> but 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 you're selling, if I understand right, you're looking for advertisers in your newspaper, correct? Yeah. And that's very intangible because I'm not selling anything that they can put their hands on. Right. right. Um, now, you and obviously have the statistics of your okay. circulation. Yeah, I, I've got pretty good stats. But here's the funny good. thing. Very often people say, um, now, now, very often when I call, because sometimes I do call, I really can't afford to go all over town to see absolutely everyone. Right. And very often they say, oh, we have a website. Mm -hmm. But And that's fine. The problem is the way I, you know, when I do when I am able to speak to people and they do understand where I'm coming from, when I say not everyone is thinking of checking your website and wouldn't it be smart to be where thousands of eyeballs already are to lead to your website. And when I'm, when they give me the time to explain that, then, you know, it, it, it seems to be a, a good pitch. Um, but sometimes it's hard to get past their resistance when they say, Oh, we're, you know, we already have a website. So we don't need to advertise. We're already on that. I, I just went to your website because I told you we publish a newspaper every week, mm -hmm. print. And on Wednesdays, my job sitting here on the bank of the river is to do the digital version. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which I'm not getting done right now because we're having this lovely session. <laughs> but I've been known to get it done by Thursday also. Okay. That's the privilege of, of age, I guess. But anyway, uh, I went to your website. We did something. Uh, we have a, a page on the simple website. It's mm -hmm. called Buy Local. Mm -hmm. This is a small town, 6,000 people. Yeah. But the surrounding market's about 10,000. Okay. And uh, nobody pays us a dime for these ads. Mm -hmm. And we kind of switch them around. And we have another thing once a week where we have the grandest place. I'm taking where our team of our, our team of reporters... Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, we have a paid staff. Mm -hmm. uh, they look for unique personality business people. People like the guy with the red cap sitting next to me here. You know, okay. isn't he an oddball? I mean, he's got a red cap. Who wears a t red tam o today? Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay, and, and every week, in the print version and on the digital version, we have the grandest place. 
which is a blatant freaking advertisement that generates absolutely no revenue. Mm -hmm. Now, again, it goes back to my volunteer but position. But they'll wag, though, don't they? What? Tongues will wag, won't they? Oh, absolutely they wag. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it becomes viral. Now, obviously, we have a Facebook page, which I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. And each article each week, already this morning, the, the front page has been put on Facebook. Well, I think it has, maybe not. And, but the opinion editorial will come second. Mm -hmm. And we also do that on Google Plus because the newspaper has a Google Plus page. Mm -hmm. And the Google, the, the newspaper has a Twitter page. Okay. So we're dripping constantly. Mm -hmm. But what we try to do in the newspaper is edify local businesses. Mm -hmm. We edify public service officers, mm -hmm. policemen, firemen. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why the website, which started in March, has had over 110,000 page views mm -hmm. from a market that I just described. You know, mm -hmm. people from Hong Kong aren't going to read this. Mm -hmm. I doubt if you in Durham, North Carolina are going to read the Geneva Shore report. Actually, because, I do like to look at small town papers. Okay, well, so do I. That's why I have yours up and I'm going to look at it later. Sorry, like you, but to, she's got me all excited here. I like the sense of community, you know. <laughs> right, right. And I think that could be your entree. Mm -hmm. You're providing a service. You're providing value to your community. Mm -hmm. What fool would not want to be interested in? in making sure that they're part of your team. What do you think, Hugh? What are your suggestions? Um, the first one is, uh, how many how many chambers of commerce are there in the Durham area? There's a standard one and a black one. The standard one is useless, and the black one is ineffective. <laughs> but um, both have large memberships. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. Why are they uh, ineffective and useless? The standard one doesn't promote anyone. Um, they have a business fair every year, which is always fun because you can pick up free frisbees and golf tees and riding pins and candy. Um, that's pretty much all they seem to do. They don't seem to promote the local businesses. Um, where I'm from in Chicago, um, the different chambers of commerce were extraordinarily busy, busily right. um, and continually um, promoting their, their, their membership. But here, they don't seem to do that for some reason. And, and the black one, the black chamber of commerce, um, they make the local restaurants very um, rich. They, they eat out a lot. Um, uh, and actually they don't they don't promote themselves either and it seems more like membership clubs you know like social type clubs as opposed to um organizations that promote their membership and i don't understand why they even exist patricia patricia here's a challenge to you okay you came from chicago right so did i, I was born 89th in cottage avenue you probably know oh where my that is god I, I just found, I just saw my apartment building uh, the other day. It's been reconditioned. Looks very nice. My grandfather built it in 1934. Oh my God! I, I'm from Third and, and and Prairie. Very very. Okay, we 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 had two taverns: one on Cottage Grove and one on 90th. So you know that's where I grew up was in the yeah. tavern. But yeah. you're, you're you're in Durham, and, and I can just tell that you're a spark plug. Okay, I mean I I, I don't have to, I I know I, if we met each other I would we okay. You just told Hugh and I publicly that the two Chamber of Commerce is suck in Durham. I hope nobody, and here's a lady. I hope nobody, a, I'm looking to see, I hope no one's from North Carolina. Here. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with telling them the truth. So a person like yourself could raise your hand, become a driving force in either one of those chambers, and I guarantee you, you'll never have to solicit business because it's going to follow you right down the trail. You have the ability. Well, I'd have to. I'd have to be able to afford membership. Right now, I'm not in that position. Um, I'm not crying wolf or whatever the term is. I, I understand. I'm totally bankrupted, um, caring for my aunt who had Alzheimer's. So I'm still in extraordinarily 
terrible financial situation. In fact, my house is in pre foreclosure right now, but I tried to okay. exude confidence and you know, you, you can't get business with a boohoo story. Well, 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 here's the one thing I'm, I'm looking, here's the same kind of person I am. I'm looking at you. That's what this program allows us to do, to see you. I'm mm -hmm. looking at your eyes. You're not BSing me, okay? You just told me very matter of factly you're having financial problems, but I don't see a woe is me continent. No. no. I see a person of backbone. I see a person of energy. Oh, this is going to be okay. a huge year. I can tell you right now. I want to tell you something that I'm doing right now, and you give me your opinion, okay? Because of this live streaming thing, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to really score. What I started to do lately is to, okay, I have a, a huge, um, uh, what's the word, calendar of events page, all right? Okay. And that's the most visited page when I check my, my statistics because it, it changes every day. Um, and people want to know what's happening. Okay, so what I started doing, okay, every morning around nine ish, ten ish, I have a, um, I, I make announcements. What's happening today? I call it Bull City Notes. Durham is the nickname for Durham is Bull. Is this a, Bull is this a lab? This is something I do on Periscope. Okay. On Periscope. Okay. Fantastic. So I, I do daily announcements, and then um, I, I even found out that the mayor is now following me. So that's pretty exciting. Oh. So after, so after I'm done, uh, I tell everybody that I will be posting the same show on Facebook if, if they missed, you know, the beginning or whatever. Okay. So I post it on Facebook and in everybody who's been announced, I tag them on Facebook so they know that I'm promoting them free of charge. Because, of course, you don't have to pay to be listed on the calendar. Right. Right. So... So everyone that I um, mention, I tag, even if even if I mention them casually, even if they don't have an event, but I just happen to mention them just because I'm talking about something else. So I tag them, then I, I tweet that same show also, and I also put it on Google Plus. So I'm hoping eventually to be able to go back to some of these people that I'm already promoting for free to see if they wanna advertise. Well, Patricia, I, your eyes told me the story, and I know that if you continue, you may not have the money to join the, the either chamber right now. Still stay with them. Mm -hmm. Do they actually charge you to go to the meetings? That's a good question. Because you see, in our chambers, anybody can go to the meeting if they want to buy lunch. And I'm sure you can find somebody to pick lunch up for you. <laughs> no, you know, but, but, but it, you see, presence at these meetings, you're not there to sell. You're there to let people know. And I'll, I don't know, I may be stretching it here, but if I went, you went to a chamber meeting and they mm -hmm. were looking for volunteers to do the, uh, some kind of an event coming up. Mm -hmm. And even though you're not a member of the chamber, you raised your hand and said, hey, I can handle, uh, uh, you know, postage or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these things follow. Hugh, come on. I, I'm, I've taken way too much of this. Uh, go ahead. You're the guest today. <laughs> two, two suggestions, Patricia. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, first one, you may not be able, uh, unless you can go to the luncheons for, uh, without being a member, you may not be able to implement this right. until you have the resources to do that. And I think that's going to be pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Don't join the chamber with the idea that they are going to promote you or that they're going to do anything for you. Well, go not to doing the, anybody else. Yeah, go to the meetings and meet just as many people as you can, start just as many conversations as you can, and ask them questions about themselves and about their business. Be interested in them and mm -hmm. build rapport with them. Okay. And then, then you'll be able to take from that that public thing where you're you're meeting people and getting acquainted with them, you're going to find some people that that you really find a lot of things in common with and you enjoy talking to. Invite them to go have a cup of coffee and have a private conversation and continue okay. to build that with them on a one to one basis and have a sales conversation about their about their business. The second suggestion that I would make is that. The business people are a large portion of the business people in the Durham community are going to be on LinkedIn. That's the place to connect with 
business people. And yeah. that doesn't cost you a dime to, to get on. And I you can just get on. But I haven't quite figured it out. I am on LinkedIn. Um, okay. Every now and then. Patricia, oh, mm -hmm. Hugh, Hugh, Hugh said that there's tons of free information. There are blabs on this platform mm -hmm. weekly on how to effectively use LinkedIn. And if you typed in LinkedIn in Google on how to LinkedIn, there mm -hmm. are free videos all over the place how to effectively use LinkedIn. Okay. I mean, we, we today, I, I don't know, Hugh, if you agree with me. If what is available to an aspiring business today was available to Hugh and I 45 years ago, uh, <laughs> You know, I would probably be in the fortune. For, well, I could, but I mean, these tools, I mean, mm -hmm. we had a telephone, a rotary telephone with no fax machine. And I still made incomes that people talk about today as being my goal. Wow. I mean, how, how did a dumb farm guy do that? I did it by applying simple mindset of business to mm -hmm. acceptable sales situations that Hugh talks about. I, that Hughes Sales Academy, trust, I mean, I understand your position, but get all the free stuff he's got. Uh, Patricia, just go in there and get all of his free stuff. Okay. And, and, and you know, I might even put him on, I might even put him on uh, uh, the, uh, on, on the uh, spot here. But, but if you're real nice to him, he might even gift you a, a copy of his uh, selling for fun and profit. I don't know. Um, I'm going to go one step further than that, Patricia. If you email me, uh, you can have an hour of my time, and we'll talk about LinkedIn. That would and, be awesome. And uh, you know, there's you can you can actually do searches on LinkedIn that will give you all of the business people in various types of companies in Durham, and you can connect with them. And once you've connected with them, then you can have all kinds of conversations okay. virtually and, and in person. Okay. So I think that would be a good thing. There's one more thing that I that I picked up on that I wanted to mention to you. And that is if you're getting the objection that, oh, I have a website and so you know I don't really need to advertise. Mm -hmm. And you can tell me if I'm wrong about this. As you're talking with people and as you're asking questions. You've got to be asking them questions about what they're doing now to promote their business and how well that's working. Right. And you have to be asking them questions about whether they're really satisfied with the amount of people who are coming into their business or calling them on the phone or visiting their website. Mm -hmm. And that's all in advance of you even talking to them about what they can oh. have if they work with you. And I, I think that that might help you head off some of the objection Okay. that you're getting okay very good, um, very good. And, and that has that all has to do with scripting mm -hmm. okay. okay yeah you, you said the magic word asking the question right and effectively listening to their response and you can actually your mind will train itself the more you do this mm -hmm. if i what my one of my most read blog posts is effective listening and I mean, it is a lost art today because mm -hmm. everybody's used to sound bites and headlines, <laughs> you see. Mm -hmm. But that question, uh, you have a website. I mean, not to be snarky, but how is that doing for you? Mm -hmm. Are you happy? Are you happy with your traffic on your website? And if they turn around and say to you, well, I don't know what my traffic is. Oh. You've heard that. No, no I'm, I'm serious. I have a website. Okay. Well, how is it working for you? How is your traffic, your page views? How about your conversions? How are they working? Mm. You know, and, and, and they kind of look dumbfounded, the deer in the headlights. You have an opening. You may not be able to solve their problem, but in Durham, you may know. This is true networking. You may know somebody that can help them more effectively use their website. Okay. And networking to me. Networking is something I've done all my life, and I know Hugh has. I used to meet people on the airplane. I'd meet a guy in Florida who has land, and he said, you know, I'd, I'd sure love to break up my land. Six months later, I meet somebody flying back to Chicago from Idaho who says he wants to move to Florida. I used to write everything down on three-by-five cards, and I have volumes of boxes of three-by-five cards of people 
from different parts of the country that had different needs. And you put those two people together and you pick up 10% on every deal, be it airplanes, boats. I mean, that's networking. Mm -hmm. You're listening intently Mm -hmm. to the answers to the questions you asked and filing it up here, writing it down and bringing it up later. You again. And the way way that we ask questions is tremendously important too. If I ask, do you have a website? What I'm going to get is yes or no. If I ask, how is your website doing? Most business people, because they don't want to look like they're schlocks, will say, oh, it's doing great. If I ask, how happy are you with uh, the traffic that you're getting to your website? Mm-hmm. How happy are you? That's That gets down on the emotional level. That's okay. a question about emotion. How happy are you mm-hmm. with that? And if I get an honest answer from them, which I'm more likely to if I ask it emotionally based, Mm -hmm. then they're they're probably going to say, well, it it could be better. You know, it's okay, but I'm not really happy with it. In which case, as you're talking with them about what your service, your advertising can do for them, you could say to them, you know, you could be really, really happy with the traffic to your website Mm -hmm. because thousands of people could be looking at your uh, website address in the local paper and going to that website to find out what you do. And then it's just a short step from that to the cash register ringing. And as your profits increase, uh, you're getting back the investment that you make in the advertising that you do. So you see, I've asked a question and then based on the answer to their question, I've told them what they can have yeah. if they if they take advantage of that. And, and also, so did you hear, did you hear how many emotional keywords that flowed out of this guy's mouth? Okay, so simple, right? He didn't even think about it, correct? Mm-hmm. Guess mm-hmm. why it flowed easily? Because he's done it over he's and it, it, it didn't happen the first time. Did it, Hugh? You didn't talk that way the first time. But what I, what I really hate, though, when I do sometimes ask people about, you know, their advertising needs, they want they want to know my my numbers, and that's fine. I have good numbers, but to me, that's kind of boring. It's not emotional at all. Okay. You know, numbers. What are your Patricia? Stats? Patricia. I, somebody asked me that. There is kind of, and, and depending on, on this report. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We do have more than one person that visits our site, but it's less than 10,000 a day. It's more than one, and it's less than 10,000. But that's more people visiting your site than are currently coming. In other words, you, you, you know, my numbers are irrelevant. Really? Well, the service the service I provide for you is relevant. I'm interested in your business. And and again, this is a tone that you develop. Hugh Hugh brought up emotion. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and that just the way he said it, that person is never going to ask you that question. Okay. It, they're never if, if you you said how happy are you with your traffic? You're not telling them anything about your site. You're interested in what's going on for them. Mm-hmm. And the way he walked that down the path was brilliant. I'm sorry, Hugh. It was brilliant. Was and right. I'll tell you what. I, I do want to say hello to a couple people because I'm excited. I always get excited. There's a young lady up here. I, I believe she's still in. And do you remember Hannah Hugh from our talk show from 10 years ago? Uh, Hannah mm-hmm. uh, Hannah got married. Hannah, Hannah, tell me success for Hannah. Her boys are now grown. She immigrated from South Africa to New Zealand, and that was a huge, huge life change. Her whole family in South Africa, she moves to New Zealand with two teenagers. No, they, were, they weren't even teenagers then. Now they're grown men. And Hannah's with us today. I was hoping she'd join in. It might not be a time thing for her because she's still in New Zealand. Hannah, success for Hannah. We're so happy you're here. You remember Hugh Little from our Focus Society Mastermind 9. We have about 400 hours of talk show before the days of streaming video where people's businesses grew on that talk show. They literally grew and started from that talk show. 
and it's all free. It's all available free every one of those hours. So, uh, Patricia, I think I, you and Hugh have to get together, okay? Well, thank you so I, much, both of you. <laughs> I will write to you, Hugh. I will definitely do that and, and take a peek at your, your workbook. What's that email again, Hugh? Hugh, H-U-G-H, mm -hmm. at redcapsalescoaching.com. Excellent. And Patricia, I have one more thought for you. Okay. Actually, one more question for you. Um, We're losing your many, volume, Hugh. How many raving fans do you have out there that just absolutely love what advertising in your newspaper has done for them? I don't know if they're raving. Um, <laughs> most of my advertisers have been with me since like the beginning. They're and raving. Are they still with you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Why are they still with you? Either they're complacent or they, or they just like to, um, you know, chew the fat when I come by every month or, uh, or maybe their numbers are increasing. Maybe they like being in a newspaper that that's all positive. And that you, need to find out. you need to find out, you need to ask some of them who have been with you for a long time, what kind of value are you finding in the advertising? What's happening with your numbers? Or what has happened with your numbers as a result of since you've been advertising with me? I have then, never asked him. And then just, just ask them if you get back a, well, you know, boy, my numbers have really gone up and I, you know, I love advertising with you because people tell me all the time that they saw me in the newspaper, then get your cell phone out and say, could you say that for me on camera and get There's yourself your and then, and then when you're talking with somebody and they say, well, you know, what kinds of results can you get? And what are your numbers like? Hey, listen to this and you just pop that video right up and let somebody else tell them that they've gotten great results from advertising with you. And that answers their question. It's really funny that you're saying that because when I went to each of my advertisers this month, I warned them that I was gonna come back with my video camera and make each of them a free 60 second commercial for YouTube. There you go, oh, beautiful, beautiful, awesome. They're very excited about it. And I think also if we can create some jealousy, because sometimes um, I, I notice when one business on a certain block sees a competitor or a business close to him advertising, they'll say, well, I need to advertise too. And I think that's a, maybe a jealousy factor or just maybe the natural, just the nature of, of, of you know, being a competitor, you know, so that's pretty cool too. I, I think when people see that, that these longtime advertisers have gotten free YouTube commercials with music and hopefully dancing elephants or something. Um, right. That they'll realize, oh my God, the Durham Skyriders really got it going on. I want to see one of those videos with the dancing elephants. That's yeah. Cool. Well, something. Hey, listen, uh, we're having so much fun, and and my wife, of course, uh, being the wonderful person she is, did uh, slip here and said, "Chuck, did you remember you were supposed to talk to Julie Cole at ten o'clock, and it's ten fifteen? Uh, not not anybody else's fault. Uh, we had tried to. We we were thinking an hour would be good. This has all been recorded, by the way." Okay. And uh, you know that you'll get a copy, I believe. If not, Patricia, we can send it to you to put on your website. Or maybe awesome. not. Maybe, you know, you might. But um, um, it will be on Hughes also. And I want to really thank, uh, we've had uh, Hannah's here, as I said, and our good friend, uh, oh, I can't remember everybody's names. We had Franklin Acosta and uh, Karen Graves was here for a moment and left. And Patricia, I, whether the three of us get together again. Uh, you can contact me at Chuck okay. at mm -hmm. you can build mm -hmm. dot it. Okay. Dot IT. Not dot com. Dot it's an Italian domain. And oh. I, since one of my blogs is you can build it, it just makes sense. That's what I've been trying to do is help people build their businesses for the last 20, 30 Very years. Good. And he, and, and, and uh, you know, for those of you that listen to this tomorrow or the next day, Hugh Little, uh, I give a personal endorsement. Uh, you know, when you know people for a long period of time and can't find any anything wrong, kind of makes you scary, you know, because 
No, Hugh, Hugh is, is telling you the real thing from, from true experience. One thing I've noticed on the internet is seem like everybody is an expert and a coach. And, 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 and no offense. Yeah. <laughs> Hugh is a coach. He, he brought up an important point. My son is a horse trainer. People pay him $1,000 a month to train their horses, and they have to keep them there a year. Okay? That's a pretty wow. stiff, stiff investment. Whoa. My son pays a friend for a week of his time, another horse trainer, and other people come to his ranch for training. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I won't mention any names, but a very famous lady in the horse world mm -hmm. in speed events. I mean, she's like the grandmother of when my son was in college, she paid him every summer to come and give her a 30-day tune-up. Okay? This is when he was starting his career. So coaches coach, <laughs> uh, uh, teachers teach, and they're always looking to learn more. The learning process never stops. I'm excited you and I are going to touch base because of the newspaper. Where maybe we can tie the Geneva Shore report. What we should do is there should be a link to the Geneva Shore report on the Durham Skyrider, and there will be a link to the Durham Skyrider on Geneva Shore Report, even though you guys are 1,500 miles away. That would be you know. fun. Yeah. 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 Hugh, uh, you know, I invited you, <laughs> to, and, and I hope that this worked out. Uh, you were able to express yourself the way you wanted to. You want any parting shots for us all, Hugh? Well, I just want to say, first of all, that uh, Patricia, it was a real pleasure to meet you, and I'll look forward Thank to talking you. with you. And, uh, Folks, you just can't do any better than uh, getting together with Chuck Bartok and picking that massive brain of his. And uh, one of the oh, things that, that one of the things that I uh, that I always suggest to people is when you're choosing a coach, choose somebody that actually has experience. Choose somebody who's done it, and not just somebody who went to college and learned some stuff out of a book and decided that they were going to regurgitate that because experience is king when it comes to sales and when it comes to business. So uh, by all means, uh, get, in, get in contact with Chuck and you'll learn a whole lot of good things from him. Thank so, you. This is a mutual Chuck, admiration society. <laughs> I really appreciate the opportunity to be on the, the Blab. This is the very first one that I've ever appeared on and talked with. And so I think I'm gonna do some of my own too. I really I like think you. <laughs> you should, you look so relaxed. That's yeah. the way he's been as long as I've known him. I'm so relaxed, I'm almost comatose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, everybody, thank you all very much. I'm going to stop our recording, and uh, thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, this is Chuck Bartok from Northern California, Hugh Little down in Florida, and lovely Shift from Durham, North Carolina. We're going to stop the recording. Okay.